The Olympus EM10 Mark II was the only camera in their non-pen range that I had never handled before this one arrived. In my mind it was a little brother or sister to the M5 Mark II, with the usual compromises of tilting rather than articulated screen, smaller viewfinder and so on. The M5 II is a near perfect camera but is just too small for my personal taste. This is even smaller so I started with a disadvantage for me personally. Let's see. The EM10 II is just a tad smaller overall than the Panasonic GX80. Without anything for size reference it could pass for a much bigger camera and it's only when you pick it up you realise that it is tiny for a DSLR styled body. Most of the back is the tilting screen with the usual cursor pad and buttons plus one function button. There's an unusually comfortable thumb and front grip and Olympus have happily resisted trying to cram too much in a small space. Three dedicated programmable function buttons plus several adaptable controls should be enough for most basic needs anyway. There's a built-in flash and a quality feel that belies its price. This is one of the few cameras I prefer in a silver finish to black. It seems to emphasise the elegance and simplicity of the design, with the black on silver markings being particularly readable. It also has Olympus's now taken for granted but still miraculous 5-axis stabilisation. Panasonic may match it with lens and body stabilisation combined, but remember that Olympus's will function just as well even with a 50-year-old Nikkor lens and MFT adapter. Aside from that, this is Olympus's standard fare. The EVF is smaller than its more expensive siblings, but not small and still a little bigger than the Panasonic GX80s. There's nothing micro four thirds fancy, no high res, no 4K photo, and the video capability is adequate, no more. I used it mainly with the 14 to 42 mm Olympus Pancake Zoom. Some photographers find the M10 II uncomfortable to use with bigger lenses. I don't, and was more than happy using it with Olympus's 40 to 150 mm f2.8 zoom. It's just lovely with small lenses like the 17 mm f1.8 and pancake zooms. Oddly, I didn't like it so much with mid-sized lenses like the Olympus 12 to 428 and Panasonic 14 to 140 zoom. My only real gripe is the too easily knocked out of position front dial, which really does need to be checked every time you bring the camera to your eye. So how does it perform? Focusing is in all respects single and continuous, the same as on the M5 and Pen F. It isn't quite as sure footed as the latest Panasonic's in single autofocus, and Panasonic's depth from defocus technology gives the GX80 for example an edge in continuous mode, provided you have Panasonic lenses of course. The stabilisation is as sublime as all Olympus stabilisation, and with my Nikon 300mm f4.5 can handhold down to 1 60th of a second with a good success rate. People who drink less than me could probably do even better than that, but I feel sorry for them, because when they get up in the morning, that's as still as they're going to hold a camera all day. Noise performance is as you'd expect, and again standard micro four thirds fare, as these rather impressive 100% noise pull ups show. I happily use the M10 II at 3200 ISO. There's the useful AF targeting pad which lets you move focus point with your finger while using the EVF. It's handy but less smooth and responsive than Panasonic's equivalent. All in all you might think I've been a little lukewarm about the M10 Mark II. Actually I'm the opposite. Take a look at the price of this camera, now look at its specification. Do you see anything missing, anything you must have and isn't there? I doubt it. With any product, whether a bicycle or camera, there's a price point that represents the best value. Pay less, and it's probably older technology or subpar quality dressed up. Pay more, and you are subject to the law of diminishing returns, buying extra but not crucial facilities, or the very latest must-have gizmo or premium build quality. The EM10 Mark II represents that value price point in Micro Four Thirds. It has everything you need for good photography and video, but nothing extraneous or fancy. The body is metal, but not waterproofed. It's not state-of-the-art technology, but it is thoroughly modern. When I first picked this camera up, it struck me visually and on handling it as being compact and jewel-like. Oddly enough, I said I found the M5 Mark II too small for my hands. This is smaller, but paradoxically fits my hand perfectly, because I can cradle the whole camera comfortably. 
Plus, Olympus have been smart enough not to overload the body with controls. If I was going to recommend a serious digital camera to someone who had only ever previously used film cameras or compact cameras, this would be it. It has the Micro Four Thirds unique selling point of compact size blended with impressive image quality, taken for granted by those of us who know the system. But it is especially suited to a regular photographer without specialised needs, who just wants to take great pictures. Just as most of us have washing machines that come with 20 program washes, and we always set it to the same one because we know that one does the job. So many of us are with cameras. I set my cameras to 4-3 aspect ratio, aperture priority, raw files, 200 ISO, single AF, single shot, electronic shutter, matrix metering. For my personal and business photography, I rarely change that, but when I do, it is likely to be the aperture or higher ISO, so provided I have instinctive access to those parameters, I'm quite happy. The M10 Mark II will do that as well as any other Micro Four Thirds camera, whatever the price. It's a really honest, value for money camera, and if that and my previous remarks sound like damning with faint praise, they aren't. Of all the cameras in the Olympus range, this one is my favourite. Thanks for watching.